Welcome back to uh, the MTR Network right after Christmas. Uh, we say we we're going to take a break, and we never really take a break. So that's, what, um, that's what happens here. So uh, this is Super Tuesday Recap. Uh, I have Shanna here. I have Jeff. Uh, Deepon will be joining us shortly. Uh, we are finally uh, doing a podcast. It was really happened before the uh, Christmas break. Um, we're going to be talking the last three episodes of The Gifted. Oh, what are these three episodes called? Hold on. I do have this here somewhere. It is uh, blah, 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 blah. Third of Extinction, Outfoxed, and Exploited. Do all their? I just I just realized that all their titles have X in them. I should have yeah. noticed that. Yes, yes, they do. I should have noticed that. <laughs> I, I should have noticed that. Not gonna lie, that's kind of cheesy, but uh, good on you guys. So um, here we go. Uh, I tell you one thing: these last three episodes, they really didn't hold back. I want to say real quick, uh, so this is episodes 8, 9, and 10. So let me before we get into the like overall feel, you know, uh, details and things like that, how did you guys feel overall about the last three episodes? I, I think during my first watch, I wasn't as impressed with the middle episode, but I did a rewatch uh, last week, and I found that I was, way more invested like I just liked it even more so I love them especially once we got the reveal about the Struckers I, I was all in I call them the Destructo Twins <laughs> how about you Jeff uh, no I, I I think it's it's been more of the same the the winter break episode uh, 110 they they really didn't care like it, it like in terms of holding back reveals they 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 made you want to watch and mark on your calendar when it it comes back and it, it to me it gave it more of of what i liked watching the first seven so i i was i, I really liked the last episode before break and and just the the way the pacing is going and the revelations that you get um i i liked it yeah so what we'll, we'll we'll reason why i asked because like 10 was uh, again i'm with you guys 10 was Fucking amazing because again, when you get the the reveals and things like that going on there, it was fine. I I, I want to say it was nine because was their plan to take uh, the health unions and and central service custody. Um, it it was kind of weird. Like it felt like some of the pacing on eight and nine were a little off. Um, but I I should have done the day because I really haven't been doing anything. I should have gone back and rewatched them to see if the reveals you get in ten. Uh, made it feel better because I I think I know what it was. It was once you uh, you you're you're very confused as to who uh, what what was her name? Was it Esma? Was that who they were? That's what her name was. Esme, the blonde. Esme, yeah, the, tele- the telepath. Yeah. You're like, <clears throat> who the fuck is this? And you're just like, something just seems. Oh yeah, this was it was Esme. You're like, who the fuck is this? Doesn't make. Who is this? Like, why does she? What What is she doing? It just feels like kind of weird. She came out of nowhere. She seems to have importance, and nobody seems to go. What's going? On? Then when you get ten, you're like, oh, oh that makes sense now. Okay, I see oh, why everything's off. I spent all of when did she show up? Eight. Yeah, I she spent showed up in eight. Every single episode going. Esme's the feds. Esme is the feds. Like I, just, I. The most of the time, I thought that she was going to be the like working for Sentinel Services, mm-hmm. but I I knew I knew she was off from jump, from jump from when she called uh, um homegirl out. Right, I knew she was off. Well, and and that's I think that's the thing that threw me off at first is they, and again, I still think that something was a little off of those two episodes, but they they do this thing where they show you Sentinel Services. And they planted a mole in, you know, they're going to plant a mole into the resistance and things like that. And so you're immediately, you know, see, and, and the other thing too is the, that's what it was. The civil services plan, it just didn't make sense to me. So let me get this straight. You're going to plant a mole into the resistance, but you're still going to tattoo a giant civil service, Trask Industries tattoo on their wrist. Right. It's not really that's that, I mean it just it seemed too blatant and obvious and, and you know that's what that would do me because so there was that and then when um she's obviously found out right because it's just like duh 
So she's found out. Uh, the, the 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 little mole is found out, and then um, the next episode, you have the doctor and everybody. They're like freaking out. They're like, "Oh man, you know, it was, how what, we got to go to we got to go to we got to go to Plan B." I was like, "Wait, that was Plan A." <laughs> plan A with to literally send somebody in that literally I. I we we joke about it, but like right, oh you have a big you have feds tattoo on your forehead. No, no, their feds tattoo was on their fucking wrist. It's like the fuck, man? <laughs> the fuck were you thinking? Like that was never gonna work. Hey, 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 that's a cool tattoo. Where you get that tattoo from? What does it stand for? Uh um uh tricks. Are you sure it's like a looks like a trash industry tattoo? Are you sure that's not what that stands for? Oh, oh, oh this whole thing no, no. I was just I was just messing around, you know. I like the way it looked. Like what? What the fuck, yo? That was. You have all the technology. You have all this. You couldn't hide that shit. Invisible ink, something like. So I think that's what that's what threw me off. You said what? They have. They, it seemed like they had a lot of disjointed plans going on, and right. just was throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah. And they just so happened to fall into the plan that they had. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it turned out. <laughs> Trash. My man from Trash ends up getting getting what he wants, but you're so right. He ends up uh, Campbell. Dr. Campbell gets what he wants, but he literally falls into his lap, right? <laughs> with no with no sense, and and I think that's the thing that, that drew me off. It's like I I like what was going on with the distance. I like what they did with um, Esme. I mean that kind of you know the redirection there. Um, I even like what we get when we get with the when we'll get with this later. Um, with the Struckers, you know, because again. Struckers and the parents have been bothering the chat at me, but they they throw some some bombs in there to make you go, huh, huh, oh, I did not see that one coming. Okay, did not, ooh, ooh the dad, ooh, okay. You know, they got us with some stuff there. But, like, I couldn't get my hand, I couldn't wrap my head around, it's not even central services, I couldn't wrap my head around trash industries. Because it, it didn't seem like anything of their shit mattered. It's like everything just seemed to, it, it feels like the one thing that wasn't written out well and that they were just doing things because, well, we need we need this to happen for the plot, and so there was the the uh, it was Chloe was the name of the uh, they planted um, uh, mutant they had. So her getting caught out was just like um, that's pretty obvious to catch her, and she didn't like the fact that she flipped out before the, she, they even like she was found out before they even got in. Well, they they have her hooked on some sort of drugs as well so you got this strung out junkie <laughs> that you implanted to try and go into the resistance like what was she gonna, gonna do once she found out where they were like what was her what was her plan right it's just like just so, kill them all right right i and that's and i think that's the thing that got me it's like i wasn't exactly sure what the plan was like which did she have a burner phone like did she have a trip like what, what was the actual plan and so I'm waiting for, like, again, and, and I guess it kind of worked, and I think they sacrificed that part because you're, you're, it was such a dumb plan that you had no choice to think that Esme was part of Trash Industries. Like, you just like, there's no way they were that dumb. Turns out, no, 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 they were really that dumb, and she had nothing to do with them. It was a bigger reveal for her later on. But, yeah, I was just like, uh, okay, that's the best you got. You know. What's crazy to me is I, I didn't even get the sense that she was working with them. I just always felt like I thought she was working with somebody completely different. Like, like maybe, maybe she is Hellfire Club. Well, you saw, which would, yeah. reveal, it would make sense why. But, um, you know, I, I, I really thought she wants, she has a vested interest in why the people that she wants to get released and she's manipulating people with her psychic powers to make them uh make them do what she wants or, or lead them compel them to go in the direction that she's going so I'm, I'm just like yo why why is it that you want this to happen is it really trask or is it something completely different so for me it i if it was trash i would have i that would have probably caught me more off guard than what it was you, you know what it was? Um, it, it was uh, so it was a little, a, a little bit of both. Like so, the first thing was uh, her. So in, in episode eight, I was thinking trash. It's funny you mentioned Hellfire Club in episode nine. That's what I was thinking. 
Because I think episode nine is when they open up with her uh, getting close to that senator. Yeah. And so that's when I was like, okay, so I don't think she's, I think she got away, but like, who the, and again, like, it was, it was so obvious when you go back and look at it, you're like, dumbass, that you, well, I do not <laughs> figure what that was. But at the same time, I'm like, uh, well, you know, and I just didn't want to go with, I, I don't know, I guess I'm still in the back of my mind going, they won't do that <laughs> on this show. And I think that sh- the show is, um, uh, it's plays on the fact that they, they, they don't expect you. They expect you not to believe they're going to do something because, well, it's Fox and it's, it's an X-Men show and they don't really respect anything X-Men related. So they're expecting you not to, not to, no, I mean, they, I mean, it's true. They expect you not to believe any of that shit. And so, uh, yeah, it turns out, um, they use that against us. And, uh, I, I appreciate that shit. So, um, but yeah, the, the, I, I could not, and again, maybe it'll be a reveal a little bit more later on. I think 10 does a, a little bit more revealing of what they're trying to do with Trask. But um, yeah, I um, I, I really kind of appreciate uh, how they were handling that and what they did there. And um, yeah, so, uh, so. And I can see why you, um, I can see why you felt like 9 was like that. Because when I think back to 9 again, it did seem the most disjoint episode out of them so far where they they involved a bunch of different storylines and it didn't really seem to mesh as well together where everything else kind of made sense like it made sense but it seemed it it seemed like haphazard almost yeah so I, you know what i mean yeah no that one was again it was the middle one and and again it was sandwiched in between two episodes that had some really big reveals. So, cause, um, the big reveal in eight outside of the, you know, the, 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 the trash and you're trying to do the worst undercover operation of all time. Like I, I cannot understate how stupid their undercover operation was and how Dr. Campbell thought he was going to get away <laughs> with this shit. I cannot understand. Like, it, it was just literally, it was literally like sending in like a, um, a cop, to infiltrate like a, uh, you know, a, a, a white cop to inter- infiltrate like a black group or something like that. Hello, you, my fellow blacks. Uh, what are, <laughs> what kind of uh, shenanigans are we trying to get in on and take against the man today? Who the fuck let the feds in here, yo? Like, did, it's. The real uh, question is did he ask how many Wu Tang clans there were? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! I think Rodney Barnes is the feds. God, I, why you got to bring up the fuck Falcon book, yo? Oh, that book is so fucking terrible. I will never get uh, past the Wu Tang claim. Yo, shout out to uh, shout out, I can't I can't remember who did it, but shout out to the person who actually confronted him on Twitter about that shit and asked him. And his responses made me even matter. And I'm like, I'm glad I canceled that fucking book. I can't wait for that book. And when that book gets canceled, I don't want to hear nobody complaining about how Mar- Marvel canceled another black book. No, 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 no. The book needs to be canceled. It's terrible. Yeah. If it dies, it dies, bro. <laughs> if it dies, it dies. Like, yeah. Oh, my God. He really did. He did really did, did nope. everything in Wu-Tang Clans. shield Rihanna. Oh, like, God. Issue three of the know. Falcon book is... I didn't... I was seeing people talk about it. And I was like, y'all niggas tripping, y'all. It can't be that bad. It's not that bad. I read it myself and was like, oh, God, it's worse. It's worse. You guys. Oh, look, I'm out. You, I was you, out. The you minute I saw that, I was like, oh, fuck this. Like, mm-hmm. I tried. Like, I tried. I tried. And it, it just felt like suburban, gentrified, hip-hop slang as a parody. You know, you know the word? A- you know a book is bad. When you're reading a page and you go, oh, my God. This is the worst page of a comic book I've ever read. And then two pages later, you go, I'm sorry, I, I was wrong. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This page right here is the worst page of a comic book I've ever read. That's what happened with the talking book. And I'm sorry about that, guys. I'm sorry. I hate to go off on that. It's like a dozen Earth, Wind, and Fires wrote it. You're canceled, ma'am. You, you, are, you, are, you are canceled. You, you are canceled. Yo, yo. I- have you ever read a book and just been screaming the whole time? We don't speak like this. Yo, that's just, <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, like, you need to stop getting these older. 
you know, you know what you know what you know what did it for me? I'm so I know we're off topic here, guys. Um, I'm trying to get deep on him. Told, I'm trying to get him to use it. There's something wrong with his, his uh, computer, so we're trying to get him in on with the um, the app. But um, you know what did it for me? It, it's just I I found out that he's one of the guys that writes for the Boondocks, and I'm like that explains everything. And it's not to say that that's wrong, oh. but like when you put that in that context, when you read the Falcon book, you're like he's writing for a TV show. He's writing for the Boondocks. Because if you think about it, that's how Huey sounds on the Boondocks. And that's kind of what his inspiration for Patriot is. And now all of a sudden I'm like, oh, you don't, you, oh, you poor, you, you poor beautiful idiot. That's not, that works on the TV show because we're laugh, we're, we're not, we laugh at Huey. We don't, we don't think that he speaks like us. We think he's stupid. So he's supposed to be he's supposed to be Riley then. Oh, Although, I'm sorry, right, right, brother with the porn rolls, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, like, not, Riley, not who he, uh, man, Riley. Yeah, it's a bitch ass dick. <laughs> yeah, it's like, but no, when you when you when you when you think that when you think that Patriot is Riley, it all it, think about it. Go back and read those panels with Riley. That's what Riley's voice. Yo, it might be fire then. I can't do that. No, I, I'm already gone. If I do that, I'm gonna keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> if I do that, I might go back to the book. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. I can't. I can't do it. It just. It doesn't work in that format. But like, that's the problem with that. I know we went on a little tangent here, guys. But like, seriously, don't read that. Don't don't read that Falcon book. Don't read that shit. It's terrible. But um, yeah. But uh, like uh, anyway. So we find out something in eight uh, about Reed. So Reed goes to visit his father. Um, we find out we have some. Um, we find out why. Uh, Auto Shucker, which here's the thing. Um, it <laughs> it's funny to me because I had in my notes this first time we meet Auto. I'm like, oh wow, he definitely looks like he voted for Trump. <laughs> yeah, uh, look like I had I, I actually in my notes I had Reed, Reed's dad looks like he voted for Roy Moore. <laughs> oh wow! You look at him and tell me you don't stereotype that that as a voter. That is a stereotypical oh. looking. Roy Moore voter. It just is. He looks like him. He tell you find out that he works for Trask Industries. I'm just saying. He I just mi- seem like a very quiet old man. <laughs> yeah, named Otto. Named Otto. I'm sorry. I stereotyped a lot here when I was watching this. I'm just saying it just. It. I went to a dark place, and um, he did not sound like he was great. Um, <laughs> Oh, before that, before that though, I had a I had this moment that I wrote down because re uh, I think uh, Esme's like mad or something like that. She's trying to get the she's trying to get everybody to go and attack the the um, the uh, the facility, right? And she, and that's why I thought she worked for Trass. I thought she was leading them into a trap, right? And um, she's uh, talking to Kate at one point, and Kate says. Read my thoughts, and I was like, mm, "Kate, you not, might not want her to do that because you are a bigot." And <laughs> it, it made me it, it made me realize just how much um, she does not realize that you are the bad guy here. You, you and Reed are not good people, and so when the telepath when the mutant telepath comes in, ah, having her read your thoughts is probably not a good thing because some of the things you say let me know that you are not completely reformed right now. So, uh, yeah, you might not want the telepath reading your thoughts, you uh, flat scanner human. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Kate had a lot of those moments when I'm just like, oh, you are, you are not good. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so we get, the, we get the, um, we talk to Reed, and the more, the more that we talk to Otto and Reed, I, you know, he starts telling the story, and they, um, they kind of really go there with, um, it's so funny when we first heard the name Strucker, right? It felt too. It it felt like too big of too much of a coincidence that this family's name was Strucker, and we know that the name Strucker in the Marvel the Marvel comics has a bigger meaning, right? And so we're all like, wait, so though Strucker, like, you no, know, Baron von Strucker, like, or how far are we gonna go with this? And um. I think this is why I, I really liked uh, eight is they go there. They do not hold back and they kind of go ahead and tie 
this family uh, name. Well, they don't bring in Baron, obviously, because that's we've had him in the MCU, but that also might explain why we didn't get a lot of him in the MCU. Um, with bringing in the twins, the Fenner twins, and and going all the way back and tying that to this family bloodline. Um, and I, for one, I thought that was pretty, um, not ballsy because I kind of figured they kind of had to do that. I was hoping they would do that, but, um, I, I still, it, I don't know. I, I guess I'm still selling the, the show. I'm still surprised that the showrunners and, and the show is willing to go as far into, uh, Marvel comic lore as, as they, they have, you know, I, I didn't know anything about the Strucker twins. I knew Baron Von Strucker and Otto Von Strucker, those names. So I was super surprised that all this, and of course I did what I always do is I immediately Wikipedia the characters <laughs> um, to learn more about them. But I really love, I can't remember if it's eight or nine, that scene where the flashback scene, which one? Of the first time they used their powers together. You told me which without one? Without realizing it. Oh, you told me. I think it was nine that yeah. had um, Andy and and Laura Lauren using when they grabbed their hands. This is before. This is when she knew she had powers, but he didn't know he had powers. Yeah. And they grabbed her. And, and they I grabbed loved. Hands. It. I love the fact that you realize it's that moment in between um, because the mom says something like. Uh, oh, the dad is like, how are the kids doing? And she's like, oh, they're good. Lauren's been kind of pulling away from me lately. And they just obviously think it's because she's a teenager. Right. So you realize it's in between the time that Lauren's found out, but Andy doesn't know yet. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes that moment like even more powerful because she clearly thinks that she did it mm -hmm. and she's trying to hide it from him. And then you find out that he... Because of that moment, that's what made him start becoming like moody and not, you know, basically is the moment when he realized that he could be a mutant. Right. Right. It's it's a, it's such a good they're telling the story so well. Yeah. I, I, I think. And again, by by tying Andy and Lorne to a bigger to the Strucker twins, which. I, I, again, and, and making them part of that Strucker bloodline. Because again, like you, uh, I think a lot of people you hear the name uh, Baron von Strucker, and you're like, oh, okay, cool, I, I know who that is. I think outside of the you know, people who read the comics, you don't really remember that you know he has two mutant children, twins, and they're kind of a problem, <laughs> even for him. And um, I can't remember what it was that I've read. Did they show up in? I can't remember if they show up at one point in Secret Warriors. That's why I was deep on this here. I think at one point they show up in Secret Warriors and they're killed. I think. I can't remember. The original um, Secret Warriors series, right? The original Secret Warriors series, yeah. I want to say I vaguely, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, it, it was a while ago. Uh, deep on really the dictionary here, so I was hoping he'd be here for this one. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and so you know, they, they are a fucking problem. And so the fact that they brought this up and they 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 kind of like, so a little sidebar here. This goes to my that the whole thing of why I, I believe that I think people really undersell how hard it is to get the mutants and the X Men into the MCU. Okay, cool. Deep is joining here, so that's perfect. I've told I've told, I've told long enough. Uh, it, it's hard to get uh, mutants and 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 the um, X Men into the MCU because of things like this. It's like they were able to seed an entire history here with the Struckers um, that we didn't have before. And you're now telling this new story with a new generation of this family line. So basically what we're seeing is we have, a, we have an entire family bloodline here. And you see that the reason why Reed doesn't, d apparently doesn't have uh, mutant powers is not because uh, he, it skipped him, because his father actively injected him with something to suppress his X gene. But but when you look past it, it's like you literally have an entire family bloodline that's been passed down generation to generation. And I think that's an important part of telling a story about the mutants and the X-Men. And if you were just to shove them into the MCU, you ignore all that. You get rid of all of that. 
And um, yeah. I, you, you just can't do that. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. And I think this show is showing you exactly why that kind of doesn't work. So, uh, And it's interesting, too, because their mom says to Reed, she's like, I thought mutant powers were random. Mm-hmm. I thought people randomly mutate. And it's like, no, they have his he comes from a lineage of mutants going back at least as far as the 30s. Mm. Like that's decades. That's three generations of mutants. Right. So there's there's all this in in the Marvel world, but also in this I guess cinematic and television world of mutants that we have. There's just all of this history, both with um, individual mutants, but also how they're embedded into our American history. Right. Right. That you can't just ignore. Right. You know, they pulled, they were, I mean, Andy and they were pulling out, uh, you know, clippings of, you know, their, their family members, <laughs> you know, killing all these people. And, and the, the history book. Right. There was a, the, the history book that they were l- looking at and it was like a, a modern history of mutants or something yeah. like that. Now, the one thing I will say about this that kind of, kind of, you know, was kind of like, I hate using the word plot hole because people overuse that term all the time is the one thing I will say here is that nobody, that they weren't already under surveillance, surveillance for this, because it's like, if you tell me that, you know, this is, this is the bloodline of a, uh, of, you know, two mutants that were some, I, I, I can't remember if they said they were some of the first mutants that, that they were, that were found out at least in this world or not. And they, you know, people weren't already looking at the Strucker name. It's not like they changed their name. It's like they were called, they're, they're still Struckers. I would think that somebody would have them on a watch list in case they, their mutant powers manifested at some point. So I do find that kind of weird. Uh, but outside of that, I thought it was pretty good. Hey, Deepalm, you, were you able to join us? I think so. How do I sound? Yeah, you're good. We got you. You're using the app, the phone app. Yeah, you guys are coming a little fuzzy. This new mic worked for a second, and now I'm actively fighting with it. Okay. Well, no, you sound good on on um, on uh, our end. So. Okay. Cool. We're we're just talking about eight. We're talking about the reveal with the Struckers and how far they went back. Hey, you know what? Because uh, I couldn't remember, but didn't I, it, <laughs> it was it was very very. It, I don't even know if they had a. They didn't. I know they didn't have a major role. But were the 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 Strucker twins the Fender, Were they killed in Secret Warriors? Um, yes, Baron Von Strucker murders his children. That's what I thought. Okay. In, in Secret Warriors. Because they were a great you know, disappointment. Or I think, I think you may have killed them before that, but they're re- their murders are referenced in Secret Warriors. Okay, cool. I couldn't remember. I, I, I couldn't remember it. He, and, he deemed them a disappointment and they're dead in the comments. That's yes. The <laughs> right. That's what. Like that's, yeah. Also, because they're mutants, they're technically to pair Baron Strucker in abomination against the Nazi regime. Yeah, true. Yeah, because you know he was a Nazi. So there's He's a Nazi. <laughs> there's there's that. You know. So um, yeah. So we were just talking about the reveal of how they went because we were saying how I, I think we might have even done it on the show. We were interested, like, hey, that name Strucker, man. I wonder how far they're gonna go with that. And they decide they really want, they decide they wanted to go there. They went full Strucker, and I like how they've kind of um, hand waved the icky. Uh, I guess how you could say implications of what they were saying on the screen. Um, the incest. No one seems to really be harping on that, which is fine. Whatever it is. What it is. So, so, I um, mean, you know, you know, don't ask. Don't, it, 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 little, we, we, little incest. No, hey, it happens. For all we know, um, don't ask, don't tell was, wasn't repealed. Show. You know, don't ask, don't tell wasn't <laughs> repealed. So who, who knows? You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> exactly. Precisely. No, but I really, I, I, I love how they did the reveal because and I think I came in while you were discussing this. It's something you and I had talked about on the mailbag is the reason you can't really plug and play this X universe into the MCU is because the mutant story is a generational one. Uh, I think it's one something you and I have talked about, and particularly as we're doing our reading for our Summer Brothers um, character corner. Uh, definitely, yeah. It's a generational story. It's a story about not just these random superhumans. It's a story of humanity being replaced. And... That feeds into the fear. I love even in this, like revealing that um, Papa Strucker had his powers uh, uh, kind of uh, suppressed. That shows that there are people who get what mutants actually are and are appropriately afraid. 
Mm-hmm. Because the second, and I loved how Amy Acker, and I'm sorry, I'm blanking on some of his character names. Amy Acker's character said, I, you didn't tell me it was, it was biological because she's already making the implication. Like, wait a second, this is passed down through genes. It's design. It is the next wave of humanity. All right. Well, we, you missed it. We, we were talking about uh, at one point when, uh, Esme had, had she had told Esme to read her thoughts, and I had mentioned that yeah, Kate, you're still a bigot, <laughs> and I don't think you know that you're a bigot. No, 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 no. I, you know, I think I, I think Kate's finding her way. I'm not willing to call her. She's definitely struggling. She's uh, recovering. She, she's right. maybe she's recovering bigot. Maybe she had bigot tendencies. But I think that this experience of living the life she's lived, like you saw her save people's lives. Like I'm not saying that makes her not a bigot. But I'm saying that kind of her approach, and I liked her outrage towards her husband, like. Hey, if you'd have been like, if, if you'd have been more informed, or we could have prepared, we could have known, we could have understood, as opposed to being living the lies right. we led. Right. Like right. she uh, seems like someone who legitimately like is is is. I mean, obviously the character, but they're portraying her in a way that sees someone who is immediately resentful of the way they were. Oh yeah, absolutely. Hey, I, I, I'm saying she hey is that woman who voted for Trump and then okay. found out that her. Uh, and then found out that her husband was going to be deported because oh, she forgot her. her husband was an illegal alien. Yeah, that is her. That technically is her. That's Kate. But yeah, she's that. She's a woman. I mean, I, I, I agree with you that she's getting better. She, and she's now, but she's realizing all of this because now she's on the other side of it. Uh, if uh, she wasn't on the other side of it, Kate would still which, be like, but, but which is, but which is, which is, which is, which is pretty, which away. which is, which is pretty, um, Realistic writing. If you look at the world, like that's oh, what yeah. happens. Yo, no, like, it people is. have something come, oh, totally. It comes close to home, and then like the I was anti-gay till my gay daughter killed herself. That guy who I interviewed for outside the center who was right. protesting Roy Moore, which was a sad story. But and, and I didn't want him to have to go through that to to come to this realization. But I, you know, hey, whatever it takes. For, I'm not whatever it takes, but like you need to get to where you get to. How you get there? It's unfortunately one of the. It's one, it's a, it, 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 you're right. It's one of the things that as much as we talk about how much the people that do that suck, and I hate that. Oh, um, even it's, us, like, let's be real. Like, we've all fucked up in the past and right. had to grow and learn. Right. It, it, it's one of the things that, for the most part, the way that most human beings learn to have empathy for others is they go through it themselves. It's just, it's an unfortunate reality that I think is one of the things that at some point we're going to have to come to terms with um, because it's just, it's, it's what it is. Like, most people are not going to do it on their own. They're going to have to. They have to, you know, find out that, hey, you know what? Gay people are just like me. Oh, that's wrong. Or I had a gay fr- I had a friend that I found out was gay, and now all of a sudden I get it, you know? It's unfortunately one of those things. Like, I literally have my notes right here. Uh, Reed basically finds out he's half black. <laughs> <laughs> what did he what happened? What... out he was passing. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's literally what happens in this, epi- in this episode is he literally finds out that, hey, um... So you know how you were hunting down? Yeah, yeah, you're basically half black. And well, uh, not even that you're half black, but you're half black, and your blackness allows you to just well allowed your your grandparents to destroy a lot of shit, right? And your kids, like <laughs> like your grandparents were the greatest mutant terrorists of all time, right? <laughs> like top like, ten. And, 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 and I know that we use this, the persecution analogy for mutants, but there is a place where it has to be like okay. At a certain point, his grandparents are weapons. Yeah, yeah, you know, you you you're. <laughs> You're, 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 it's, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, very ironic thing that this is a man who was hunting down, um, he literally was hunting down and, and prosecuting, uh, uh, mutant terrorists, and his bloodline is literally, he's related to two of the Nigga, greatest there's a, movies. There's an argument to be said that he has a job because of his grandparents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not wrong. <laughs> they created a new economy of <laughs> detaining these crazy ass people. Oh my god! It's like it's like finding a white a, a black a passing as a white person was you know turned out to be a great slave catcher, and it's like, well, you know, your great grandparents <laughs> were oh the god. greatest runaway <laughs> slaves of all time. You know, you 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 were related to Harriet Tubman. <laughs> like this man, his name is like Reed Tubman. <laughs> it's like if, hmm. if Harriet Tubman destroyed. Destroyed lots of property. Right, right. <laughs> I'm not saying That's she should have burned down. I'm not saying she should have burned down that. Uh, I'm not saying she should have burned down that plantation, but I understand. I understand. I, I, I'm not going to allow this conversation to turn into Chris's villain agenda. <laughs> the struggle oh. were bad. Oh no 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 no. Oh no 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 no. no. Oh no no no. Let me let me let me go in. Let me go in back out of that one too. Like there is no villain. 
I got I got to protect the village. I wasn't, into... I wasn't entirely comfortable with the Harry oh, no. Tubman analogy. Well, look, I, I'm not. I, look, I have I have limits with my villain agenda thing. Like, some people were trying to uh, try to use the villain agenda for uh, Kylo Ren. I was like, oh, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. Let's not be smirched. The good name of my villain agenda. All right, I have. Ben's an ass- Ben's I have. An asshole. I have. I have standards here, guys. I have standards. <laughs> you guys live up to my standards as a villain, and um, Ben is just an asshole. He's a little asshole, a little child, and he does not count. <laughs> Okay. You, don't, you don't die on that hill. Not yeah, on that you, hill. No, no, no. There's a lot of hills I might die on, but not that one. <laughs> not on Kylo <laughs> Ren. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, um, oh, yeah. Uh, something about what else is the episode? So, like, I, I like the fact that we get this info dump from from the grandfather. Um, and then he sacrificed. So, and then you find out that the other thing, too, I like about this is, and it's another thing that is a story, and again, D. Palmer doing, uh, doing our summer, Summer's Brother, uh, Character corner tomorrow, and um, yeah, it's one of those things you kind of find out that the parents have all this hate for their, their the kids have all this hate for their parents, and then in some cases you find out it's like, oh well, it's a little bit more complicated than you thought, and um, you know, Reed had all this the, the, these problems with his father, thinking that his father was you know this asshole, and again, I think the show does a good job of <clears throat> of sometimes leading you down a path that you're not expecting them to go. And you're you're kind of like you're hating the father already. Like I said, I, when he shows up, I'm like, oh, this this is a Trump. This, this father's like Trump. I mean, he's a Trump voter, right? Then you find out the father is really he's been trying to stay away from Reed to protect this, to protect his son, you know. And he didn't know anything about Andy and Lauren, and he had hoped that his efforts had protected his 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 children, his child, and his grandchildren. From going on this path, he, you know, this, and again, I'm not gonna say he was a good guy either, because his his belief still came down to the idea that it's the powers that make the mutant bad, you know, and that's not that's that's not really the case in most times. Uh, but you can see what where his th- thinking was, and that he was trying to protect his family. So all, all he had seen was the powers be bad, right? And that's all that's all he knew. And so he was trying his best to, you know, protect his family, protect, you know, protect his kids and protect his grandkids. And, um, you know, when he finds out that, you know, I'm wrong, I, I, I didn't do anything. I did all this stuff for nothing. He, he gave up the, the relationship with his son, never having a relationship with his, his grandchildren and all for what, you know? I'll say this, the info dump from the father really – kind of refocus the show because I think going into this last series of, of three, I think we can all admit that we were more intrigued by the world around the Shuckers and the Shuckers themselves. Oh, absolutely. Um, what's up? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that this was a good, a good chance for the show to one expand the universe and give us that history that as we've discussed, makes it difficult to slide into any existing universe. But at the same time, remind us that the leads are the leads. Mm-hmm. And while Polaris is badass making uh, brass knuckles out of forks. <laughs> there's something, there, there's a reason why we're, we, these are our, um, our, our, our characters giving us the view into the mutant underground. Right. Because we need that perspective to be the outsider. But at the same time, you're going to realize that your outsider is way more inside than we ever thought. It's a really, it's a deft piece of writing. I really appreciate it. Oh, you know, they absolutely did, absolutely did make it so because, like we were talking about this, how I feel like episode nine was the one that was kind of a weak in, in, out of these three. Um, but eight and nine really do give you a lot uh, there. And um, I really appreciate, especially around the Struckers, like, because especially when you get into 10, you're like, okay, there's a lot here with the Struckers. And once you know what they can do and you're looking at them, like, I think, is it is it eight? Yeah, I think it's eight where. Reed comes in to tell his family that his father's died, his father's dead, and dead what happened. And in the episode, and the, and the father had told him, was like, yo, just make sure they don't, it's so weird, make sure they don't hold hands, which I'm like, ah, well, I think we've already gotten to the part where this is already, you know, that's, yeah, if, if that's, if that's the line that you need to set for the, for, 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 for these, for these two, then we've probably already crossed that line. Uh, and the ends the episode with them holding hand here, like, yeah, yeah, this is, this is going to go. Well. But I also like the reveal that they'd done it before. Right. Mm-hmm. They felt the beginning of it. And, and I, and we'll talk about this tomorrow on the, more on the summer's cover character corner, but, uh, or whenever it drops, dun, dun, dun. Um, 
<laughs> it's called a tease, kids. Um, but it's interesting that it's taken like the strictly generational approach to powers. Because there's two schools of thoughts with mutants, and they've been kind of supposed to like either you get your powers from your parents or they influence your powers, but your powers when they manifest, they 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 happen to where they can help you the most. Like uh they were falling out of an airplane and Scott only thing free for Scott were his eyes. So that's where the Alpha Blast come from. That's one of the theories by mutancy. But with this, with them saying that it's directly genetic, they basically just told you who Polaris' dad is and where he's coming. Oh yeah, no, they they they've never like, hidden. Them yeah. doing that, I was like, oh, we're going straight to it then. All right, then we've gone with that theory. Fair yeah. enough. Here's the thing. Because the... now, now yeah. I'm like, where's the helmet? Show me the helmet. So uh, I'm I'm, and we had talked about this before. Like I'm really hoping this show gets a second season. Um, uh, and because I don't think they're going to – the show has done this thing where I think it's fed on the fact that they they think – they don't – they never wanted – they didn't want to show their hand. And so they've been doing mm-hmm. a lot of underhanded things. So they didn't want to come out and lead out right, right out right out with who Polaris' dad is, although they hint to it a, a lot. Um, and, again, we, we after I, Jeff, you and I, we, 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 you know, we talked to uh, – like I've talked to – um, Emma at um, San Diego, and you did the interview for us at New York Comic Con, and she doesn't hide from me either. Like she's like pretty much like, yeah, you know, wink, wink. We're gonna be bringing in Magneto. We're gonna be talking about Magneto. We're gonna at least talk about him. But now between this and what they did with Esme, like I'm now like, well, how far are we gonna go with this? Like, m- we probably will get a mention of Magneto. We might not get him on the show, but like it opens up things like, could we get an Emma Frost? On the show, like could could things like could we get somebody who is you know a pretty well known mutant, but maybe not like you know one of the t- top five we think of, but somebody like that and bring them onto the show. At this point, I wouldn't put it past them because they. Well, Go ahead. did you did you watch the preview for the upcoming episodes? Yes. I mean, they're slinging out. You know, why did the X-Men choose us to continue their work? Where are the Brotherhood of Mutants? Like, they, they're they slinging out all the words. Right. Like, I'm surprised they're not saying you know, Hellfire Club or all these other things just outright. I'm going to be honest. I think that might be the one thing that hurts the show, the fact that they're trying to be too cute with it. Because I think more people would watch it if they didn't. Like, And I appreciate, I, I appreciate what they're doing. I appreciate what they're doing. It just... it. I don't know. I'm hoping they're not being too cute and it doesn't get them a second season. It's it's the worry you and I had about season one of S.H.I.E.L.D. Right. Where you would, every episode they would say someone's name and you're like, well, you're just reminding the viewer they're not there. Exactly. And so, uh, again, I, I don't have a problem with it because I think it's great. But at the same time, it's one of those things like I'm hoping you're not being too cute and you don't get it. Because like I said, I mean, the review of of... of, of the uh you know who Esme is is just like it was done really well, but at the same time it's like man they 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 strung it out alone for three episodes to, to bring that out, and it was a great reveal and don't get me wrong I love how they did it but at the same time, you know by not having it up there up front you know there were a lot of your your first season Deepam and I talk about this all the time when it comes to comic books like you got to write that first that first six issues like you're not going to get another six. And same thing happens when it comes to TV shows. You got to make sure you hook people, you know, in that first season. Because if you don't, you're not going to get a second season. See, and I would say that on the other side of the exact same argument is that the Esme reveal is, is one that is going to help them push to a second season. You're right. Because if they didn't reveal it to be Emma, then I'd be like, you were hiding your hand. The Stepford Cuckoos are like, it's a Grant Morrison creation from 2002, one? Oh. Yeah, something like that. Anyway. But it's a fa- it's a fairly straight line for those comic book fans in the know to Emma Frost. If you don't know who the Step for Cookies are, and this is their second appearance in mass media behind um, Wolverine in the X Men animated series, there's also a cameo of the three of them in the in the last shot of uh, Days of Future Past. There is, but yeah, there, there, there's you see when when Storm welcomes Logan, there's three twins walking in the background together. Stop! Don't don't worry about why I know that. Uh. Um, <laughs> And I think for us, we're like, oh, shit, you're going full Morrison. This is going to get weird as shit. But for the actual viewer, it's like, 
these are just three girls who have the same power. They're triplets who, they're, there's no explanation. And I like how they developed this mystery. Like, I'm wondering, hey, you're going to go all five? We're just going with the three. Like, because it started right. with the five and one. Let's see how this goes. But, like, I think that for the uninitiated viewer, and we'll talk about nine in a second, but, like, that stinger at the end of nine is a gripper. That's one for the first time you felt like there's not one united mutant underground. There's truly two sides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, and more than anything, that's the compelling part about me, about X-Men really. It's that, yes, the, 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 the quote unquote good guys believe one thing, but there are people who are like them who believe some other shit who are willing to go through them to get it. Right. And I, I think that's a great, that's a great way of doing it without having to come out and, 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 and cause you gotta think about it. It's not just when, when you think, when we think the X-Men and we think mutant, we think such a small, we, we make it such, so, such small potatoes, right? Because when you think of the X Men, you're like, okay, what X team? You're talking about just X Men? Are we talking about X Force? Are we talking about X Factor? Are we talking about like what X? Are we talking about New Mutants? Like there are so many things that spin out of the X Men, you know, there, that, that you can do. Uh, and there's so many ways of, of 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 dealing with Xavier's dream, if you will, uh, and that conflict there, and not actually having you know the main X Men on on screen. Like there's so many ways of he- handling that and dealing with that. Um, you can definitely do that. Um, before we move on to to the next episode, because uh, we're dealing with eight, I just want to say once again more teamwork than the movies. When they had Marcus pin down the spy and then blink teleport Johnny above her. How, oh my god! So I think that episode came out. Was it the week before we got the crossover episode? Mm, All I know is I feel like I saw the preview for the crossover episode where I saw Cisco do that and Ali jump through the the breach, and then I then saw it actually executed <laughs> on this show, and I was like, "Why are they giving me everything?" Yeah, I think why that, yeah. are all the shows giving me this? I think it was the week. <laughs> I think it was the week of the crossover because it was the November twentieth episode. So, yeah, it was so like I was just like, "This is." All I've ever wanted is to see these people work together and use their powers in tandem. Why is this so hard? Why have I not got this before? Yeah. It's not only that they're using them in tandem, they're using them logically too. It's it's actually uh, a tactical, strategic maneuver where you see it executed and you say, okay, that's how I would have did it. Like It looked like I was watching somebody play Marvel versus Capcom. And then they were using the tag team moves. That's how it always should be. Well, it should be logical. Like if, if, if I have ice powers and you have fire powers, we need to figure out a way to combine them that we don't negate each other. And so we're going to think of a way that we can do it. And it's, and it's actually smart. Like that's what would happen if, if, if it was real life, quote unquote. And, and that's one of the things we see in the, uh, the cartoons a lot of times and seeing that, it, seeing that on the show, it was refreshing. Well, think about I, how. Good. Good. No, I was gonna say. I mean, think about the fact that the, I mean, the main characters are the Struckers and the Strucker kids, and their powers complement each other. Like their powers are made. Their 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 genetics are set up so that they they do work in tandem. Like the way this show is coming to the idea of it's 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 kind of you know the opposite of the way that everything has been working in the movies. You know. And they thought this through so that, yes, we're going to have these two kids who are related and their powers are technically going to be complements of each other. You know, they're not going to see it. I mean, yeah, separately on their own, they're fine. But when you put them together, like, they then become something greater than, you know, you can imagine, which is, again, what we've always wanted. It, 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 it shows a fundamental understanding of mutants, of the X-Men, of what the source material is, and... It's something that, I, again, I, I think that a lot of people just don't give this show credit for doing what the X Men have always, what the X Men movies are supposed to be doing. Can, can we also talk about how they did Super Speed better than the X Men movies? Oh yeah, you're right. I did. I did. Can we talk about that? Can we have that conversation? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it seems like these people who have smaller budgets tend to get Super Speed better because it's one of those things that once you got all the money, you're like, well, how do I use all the money? You don't have to. <laughs> you what we've always done with there are small camera tricks you can do to make people look fast. And the, the Flash and this are using them well. Yeah. However, when Barry Allen's wearing skates in Justice League, 
<laughs> or running like Ace Ventura. Well, no, that's the other thing. I, I concluded that his stride is akin to a speed skater than a runner, which <laughs> is the only, the, only mo- the only motion he's making is not running. It's not running. <laughs> it's got to be something like that. Yeah, but the problem, but I'm, still, think, I'm still thinking about his shoulders and how he throws them out. Like, because even Ski Speed Skater don't do, they still do the knife hands. They still do, they still pump the arms. Like, I don't understand. I don't watch as much speed skating as you, I apologize. Well, I know, I'm just All saying, I'm I don't, saying. I'm just very, I'm just very, I'm just very disturbed by the way that, <laughs> I'm very disturbed by the way Barry Allen runs, okay? It's just, I, I can't, I just, I don't understand. Nobody runs like that! No one's ever run like that, or they fell a lot. It doesn't look like Barry Allen was falling the whole time, which maybe that was the point. Um, but yeah, I just this show it just it's it's gotten the um, it's really captured the 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 atmosphere around mutants that have always been there to the very point like you said earlier the Shruckers didn't change and it's changed to Von Shrucker. dropping the Von is what a lot of families did when they hit Ellis Island. Right. Stan Lee's name isn't Stan Lee; it's Stan Leibowitz. He changed his name to avoid embarrassing his family. What do you got in the comics? Like the little wrinkles that have popped their peppered throughout these episodes really make you feel like you're watching a Marvel comic. Right, right. And it's also the reason why I think a lot of these properties work better as television shows than as movies, because, and I'm going to probably talk about this tomorrow on the mailbag, because I'm sure it'll come up. There's a reason why Marvel's movies have done so well, and the others haven't really grasped it, is because at the end of the day, you've got to stop looking at them as movies, and start looking at them as standalone episodes of a television show. Kevin Feige's your showrunner, and these are all episodes. Leading to Sleep's Week, which is Avengers 3. Yeah. They've all got the same vision and same voice, and so that's what's able to help this coherent storytelling. And now that they've trained us to watch television and the big screens, it's harder, it's easier for us to kind of, the televisions, you can do weird shit on television like Dreamer or like the Cuckoos because we're trained to accept a larger story told in a serialized manner. Mm Mm-hmm. I think the failings on the other side of the block have come where they say each one's got to be... Because you got to remember, DC invented the superhero movie. They did Superman first. They invented it. Marvel said, fuck your movies. You're making television shows, but you're going to pay a lot of money for them. And no one's reacted well since. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, all right. So let's go to... So we're in nine. Like I said, nine to me was the one that was the weakest out of the three here. It's a middle episode, and I mean, I feel like a lot of things that happened in nine just had to happen because you had to get to this point. Set the table. Yeah, to set the table. Um, and again, I, th- I think, I think you said it that you rewatch it and it makes more sense. I want. So is nine the one that they show? Esme meeting the senator. Is that the one, or is that the? Is that no, that's the beginning of that's the beginning of nine. Is the beginning of nine? Wait, wait. No, the, isn't the beginning of nine the flashback when they use their powers for the first time? Yeah, you're right. Because the is. beginning of eight is the this von Strucker von Strucker twin. Right, and then so the beginning of ten is the one with Esme. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got a number off. Then I'm, yeah. I thought we were reviewing eight nine, uh, seven eight nine. Sorry. Yeah, you know, it, 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 whatever the ones are, the last three of the, the season. Right. So yeah. um, you knew know the reveal is, so you obviously watch all ball. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I just, I just forgot what number we were talking about. Right. When I, when I was saying nine, I meant ten. ten. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so, uh, but this is the one where, it, it, again, it's pretty straightforward. They decide they're going to hit the power station. And you know what? I, I know I know what also got me with this one. It, it just felt like it was too convenient that Jace kind of figured out what they were doing. And how they were getting there. And I, again, I feel like this is the the story in the last three episodes becomes more about who Esme is and, and who um, and what we, we now know of the Struckers. Uh, and they kind of just had things that were going on with Trask and the and Sentinel Services happen because they needed to happen um, here. And um, I, I guess the biggest thing is you, you get, I, again, I don't want to undersell. You at the same time are also going through. Some things with because we didn't talk about the first last episode. With I'll, I'll, I'll ask our resident uh, shipper here. Uh, how did you feel about the things with Marcos and and Lor- uh, uh, Lorna in this episode? Like they're they're back and forth. Like it, I get they had to do it, but it kind of I, I didn't care enough about it. Shanna, did she disappear on us? No, I'm here. She didn't know she was the shipper. Apparently. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, "Come on, you! This is this is your this is your come on, Shanna. This, this, come on. this is this is your wheelhouse." Okay, I enjoy relationships. I said the next person, but I don't think I'm the shipper. Come 
Oh, Shannon, we all, we, I love how everyone stops Shannon's like, what, me? Right, like, I mean, come on now. Let's okay. <laughs> so, I mean, I we're, we're talking about blinking them, right? No, I was actually no. talking about uh, uh, Marcos and, and Lorna. Oh, Marcos and Lorna are completely different. Because Marcos and Lorna are married. Are they? <laughs> What? Like in my mind, they're married. Okay, we'll see. They re- <laughs> see, you need that little special caveat there. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, in my mind, they're married. So no matter what happens, they're gonna work it out. Like they're gonna make it happen. They're gonna work it out. So Not when they kill Marcos. <laughs> Will you just stop? Uh, they kill Marcos. Like you bring a guy named Alexan, Alexander. I hate. Look, you. I, 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 we all know. Uh, I've got- I've got, I'm, a, I'm a Havoc fan. Whatever. It is what First it is. of all, we're not killing Marcos because he I love him. He has no analog in the books. Whoops. Because He's I love gonna die. Because I, I love Chantille, we're not killing Marcus. Marcos. Okay? <laughs> this is bad. bad. <laughs> and then, <laughs> but what I really like more than anything about this whole thing with them um, was how her powers manifested in her nightmares. Mm-hmm. That I thought was really cool. I, I want to mm. see more of that because well, Polaris is awesome because she is so in control of her powers. To, to see when her powers go out of control are, is even more interesting. I, I, like, getting... I like the layers they're giving her with having her train the, the youngins. Right. So then mm-hmm. it explains, it's like an end story reason why our team works together well. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I was kind of also looking at the nightmare stuff she was having because she was all that nightmare, the dream and stuff like that. I was also wondering if we're going to start seeing more and more of her, a little bit having some of her mental, her uh, no mental issues. Oh, so, Paul Rose is crazy. Yeah. So I was kind of wondering if we're going to get like, some of that, if that was the start of this going on and, and getting some of her more, um, yeah, uh, yeah, some of those effects. The only, the only reason I'm hesitant about that is because I'm too, I, I'm afraid, and this is me being fox shy, of them ascribing her psychosis to the pregnancy yeah that's why i'm like uh, when yeah. too easily and it's so easily done in the books where it's she literally is affected she is connected to the poles of the earth mm-hmm. they give her like these traits that are that are um somewhat volatile i'm not scared of her none i'm just saying like she crazy yeah, she's, so she's literally bipolar Lit- i mean like literally like it's literally it's, I, I like the way like it's been something of a um uneven depiction of Lorna in the books over the what forty years of her existence, mm-hmm. but one of them's always been that they've been able to write her inconsistent writing into a character trait, and that she's a little off kilter. Yeah. So, um, and then as far as uh, the main ship that I know, uh, the messy ship, I, I knew <sighs> Dreamer when when they said Dreamer was going into the field into the station, I was like. Oh, this isn't in well for her. <laughs> I mean, like, Blake's gonna cut her in half with a with a teleporter, right? I'm just like, uh, <laughs> she's not getting out of this. I mean, she got out of it, but she didn't last through episode ten. I'm like, well, that that, that had to happen because I'm like, yeah, you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna make it in this. You're not gonna yeah, it's not gonna go well for you. So, um, I did not. Okay, so this is really hard for me, you guys, because you know I love my my love triangle, and I also felt in that last episode we got the final half or the final side of the triangle also finding out that they love each other. But now we check out one of the points. So it's a line. It's so much not messy. Yeah, it's not messy now. So I don't care about it anymore. It was, but messy. the messiness was what made it great. <laughs> and also like the, like the moment where they finally find their common ground, but then they're locked up together and they're, you know, finding strength in each other. And then out of nowhere, they kill Dreamer. Is it really out of nowhere? Why? Well, oh, no, no it, I'll tell you I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because yeah. here's the thing. Because now you've already, you've already, uh, Clarice Blink has her memories and has her, they already had that feeling there. So it's an easy, right? It's easy to write her out of the show now because the memories and the feelings are there. And so it's like, well, we got the good part. That's all we needed. So yeah, uh, she gone. She gone. <laughs> she, gone. she gone. She gone. I really like that actress too. I, I, it, it did. Re- yeah. It, it, yeah. We'll get more into 10 minutes, but it did remind me that, um, blinking the little girl in, in, in nine. That was another thing. Cause she connected with the little girl 
who was also a um, uh, also was at the foster home that uh, Blink had been at at one point. And so she talked to Blink. She talked to so Blink and and, and Clarice kind of I know Clarice Blink and, and Dreamer kind of put that. I think what did Dreamer's really? It was like saucer or something like that. I can't remember what it was. Uh, they put aside their difference to have her kind of take away those those memories that little girl had. I think that was <laughs> nine. So I loved it. I love I love yeah. their love. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Was it? I mean, was there anything else major in nine? Like again, nine, which is basically set up for. Again, we 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 do get the Stroker kids testing their powers out and seeing what happens. We get Andy being like the one who won't do it. Thank you. That's what I'm going to bring up. So I thought I also like that. I like the fact because up until this point, we always got the idea that Andy was the one who would go all destructive and not. You mean Andy Klebold? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and not. <laughs> Lauren and it turned. I like the idea of turning that on their head and Lauren be the one that's more susceptible to giving in to the destructive power, and and Andy not Andy being the one that wants to hold back. You know, like when they're in that building and he's like, Yo, "We can, we can, we can do this. We can escape." Well, even before then, when they're talking and she's like, "Yeah, we could have." I, I liked it. I like the power. I like the like we had. Like Andy seemed. Andy seemed like he was more afraid of it. And Lauren just seemed like, oh yeah, okay, you got your first hit of the drug, and you, you, ma'am, need to go to rehab right now. <laughs> and I wonder if it's because she spent so much time hiding and suppressing her power mm-hmm. that finally, like, feeling all of the power. Because you have to think it's also been building over mm-hmm. these past couple weeks. She she's used her power. Her power has always been the more quote unquote useful one in terms of helping people versus Andy's, which seems very destructive. So like she's slowly been gaining confidence in using her power. And then to find out like you're the most powerful or like together, you're the most powerful mutants Mm -hmm. on the planet. That can be like really intoxicating. Yeah. Like I, I just watched Legion this week since I'm I have like a whole list of shows to binge while I'm on vacation so I just watched all of Legion and I think the people who do Legion also do this yeah and it's a similar kind of thing where he's a super powerful mutant his problem is that he thinks he's crazy (laughs) so but like but when he realizes when he has that moment of realization like I'm not crazy I have powers he goes a little overboard killing people mm-hmm. yeah so <clears throat> i mean i get it i get why she she went that way immediately <laughs> oh no no and the mean to my my mind the mean normal is never wrong here i mean <laughs> the other the other thing is that when they when they combine they literally like they they, they become one person so all mm-hmm. of that anxiety that fear um that uh, Andy was feeling, she began to feel too. So mm-hmm. they complement each other in calming each other and get to that state of euphoria right. where she may have been more reserved before, but once she connected with her brother and felt that destructive power and that feeling they got when they linked up, it, it was similar to to a drug where she was just like, "Oh, I, I like how this feels. Let's 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 keep going." Because um, she even says it, she alludes to it when she says she she basically says when they feel when they feel everything tearing apart, it's like they just felt it. They felt the power keep going and going, and they didn't want to stop. You knew it was destructive, and you still didn't want to stop. So mm-hmm. they they're on that that like <laughs> this is like mutant E at this point, <laughs> mm-hmm. and they're going completely into another realm of consciousness. So I can, t- I totally get why it would be addictive for her. Well, they also, they also kind of called their shot with this as well, because even before uh, we've seen them ever use their power together, she's always been the calming force so to, to Andy. So they've always had a kind of like that connection there at some point, even beyond just using their powers. He's, she's always kind of been there to calm him to begin with. And so now you have the... When they it physically manifest and they're both like, you know, she's physically common. She takes on some of that. Like you said, they take on each other's traits. And it's like I said, I really like how they did that. I think that was a very important thing. And it, it makes sense. And it's so funny because, you know, again, me and you, we've seen them, you know, in person. They feel like this in person. 
Like she is, she's like his guardian in real life. And it's mm-hmm. just like, it, 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 you don't, you're like, are they really brother and sister in real life? Like you think that sometimes because they're like, she's that, she's a person that they, that the show, they'll send over, uh, yeah, send her over to get, to get him to, to, to get to the table he needs to get to. And she follows him around and she, like, it, it is very, it is a very close relationship you see. And they're, they're, they're like siblings. It's, it's if very, I didn't know them. And I just walked in. They feel like brother and sister. Like they feel yeah. like me when I'm around my my younger sister. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's exactly what I got. And I'm just like, is this method acting? Like right. did you guys just walk <laughs> in and this is just what it is now? Right. Well, because I think of, I think a lot of it is the fact that they're on a television set with shoots for so long, and you spend right. time on a set. You have like your set brother and your set sister. So many because you're th- these jobs are like that's the reason that you see films get made and like two months like finished principal photography and these television shows are like we got a week off and we're going to hang out with each other together when we're not together we're not on the show yeah right yeah that's the thing i think a lot of people don't understand that when they're like well why can't you just put these people into the tv show i'm like because they don't have no lives because they're, they literally <laughs> particularly for like right. a show like uh, uh, this show is at least only 13 episodes but uh, god you talk about like agent of shield or like the flash or something on the show that go like 22 23 episodes it's like they're shooting like 10 out of the 12 months out of a year like they get two months off. Like that is, yeah. No, I, I, I you either like your coworkers or you're not going to be on that show for very long. Because I, 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 when I, whenever I find out there's some cast members that don't like each other, and they've been on a long running show, I'm like, how did that work? Oh my god, <laughs> it's cr- so. On the one hand, you have like, have you you seen like Candace and Keenan mm-hmm. um, from The Flash? They are constantly hanging out or tweeting at each other like you can tell they're like big brother big sister like uh big sister little brother it's very cute but that show castle that show was on for like 20 seasons and the two main leads hated hated each other other. yeah i I don't understand how that happened i I don't don't, i don't get it like they're not only were their characters like together and in love but they have all of their scenes together right (laughs) there's a lot of different you you think about it like work Mm -hmm. you you may you may click with some people at work and other people you may not you 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 may not you can't stand their guts but you work well like deep you you know uh, how many wrestling stories we hear about wrestlers who hated each other but right you just didn't get along but could make it work in the ring right when they're in the ring you they tell that story and it's just yo i hate this dude but this is like my when it comes to wrestling, like this is the dude that I I make the most money with. This is the dude that I can like we could tell the best story possible in the Edge, ring. Edge and Matt Hardy. Yeah. Like, like they literally real, just, stole, just really quickly, Matt Hardy got hurt. Edge legitimately stole his girlfriend. <laughs> and they came back and worked it into an angle on television. And they were both they hated each other at the time, but they were both professional enough to do the job and make the money. I'm not professional enough. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Vince, Vince McMahon, you Vince no, McMahon you tells hurt. you. You get Vince hurt, you're on the shelf, and you're, one of your good friends steals your girl while they're on the road and you're at home? Yeah. No. I'm bro. not professional enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> not professional enough. Happened, that, way, yeah, right. You know, every interview yeah. they do, they're like, we, no one took liberties. We were safe. Yeah. We told the story. We did our jobs. Yeah, yep. yeah, I'm not professional enough. I, I sh- so, shout out, shout out to professionals that can do that shit. I know I cannot, because my face tells all. And I just look, I can't, I can't, I don't even work with my coworkers that closely like that, and I can't handle that. Like I would, like me having to be in a ten minute meeting with somebody I do not like who does not go well. Like I changed, matter of fact, I changed my last job because of that shit. I had to deal with a guy for ten minutes out of a day most days, and I'm like, I can't do this shit no more. It's too much for me. <laughs> Every time I see his face i want to smash it into a keyboard so no gotta change jobs <laughs> oh yeah i can't i can't imagine being that close and up like and you have when you're acting you you have to be up in people's personal space like that, that's the thing about these co-workers like i mean like even when you talk about like wrestling you're like it's one thing to say my co-workers and i you know and keep i keep my arms distance when you're working in, a, in, a, in an environment that requires you to literally invade right. each other's private personal space I'll, I'll say, different. you know what? That you know what? That's why you're actors and I'm not. <laughs> that is called uh, acting because the they're professionals, right? Professional acting because I couldn't do that shit at all. Um, all right, so let's get into uh, episode ten. And um, was there anything else for nine that anybody think of? Like, is it's like other than um, getting? If there's a mutant history textbook, I will read it. Yes, <laughs> produce the textbook with like a tastefully like companion site. I'll buy your textbook. 
Oh, yeah, you know who know. should do that? You know who should write it? Lorraine <clears throat> Sink. Lorraine Sink from Marvel. She did the other Marvel encyclopedia. You should totally tweet that at her. She'd be very excited about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, she was. I, all, I, she also dropped some uh, Agents of Shield uh, spoilers, possibly. Yeah, I believe I'm it was suggesting that maybe do. maybe there would be Blade on the show. Uh, we'll see. Um, we'll see. I'm it's ta- a long way to go to the vampires. Yeah, I'm taking I'm taking that with a grain of salt. So me too. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, not not a thing about the roaches. Let me stop. Let me stop. We'll say that. Yeah, we'll it's, that. <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's a it's a long road to go. But we'll we'll we'll, we'll see. Um, what was going to say? So yeah, again, the big thing with nine. Is, what I think in no, no in nine they didn't. So in ten is when. The the reeds go to see Jace, and so here's the thing, man. Jace is definitely is irre, he's not going to be redeemed at this point. Like I've I've come to that, I've come to that conclusion. <laughs> Thank you. That Thank he you. can't. Welcome to my side. He can't be redeemed wait, at this point. Okay. Hold, no, wait. hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me finish. <laughs> let me finish. Let me finish. It's a wrap. Let me finish. Did you see what happened this episode? J, Jace can't be redeemed. And I don't blame him. All right, like Jace, Jace. Okay, so look, you want a vill- villain agenda? Villain agenda for me is Jace Turner. Like he's going to be the only human that gets a villain agenda. Because listen, everything that's happened to him, and I'm like, every time he's on, every time he lets his guard down, he's like, maybe I'll give them a shot. Some terrible shit happens to him, and I cannot blame the whatever Jace happens. Ain't wrong. Yo, I might get a Jace ain't Jace was right shirt because I'm just saying, like he lost his daughter. Then he had to relive losing his daughter again. Like that scene with him and Dreamer, I was like, oh Dreamer, you are going down the wrong tree here. Cause I here's the thing, I completely forgot about it. And then he brought it up and I was like, oh no, Dreamer, you should shut the fuck up. You should shut the fuck up. This is not gonna go well for you. <laughs> oh no, no, oh no, baby, what are you doing? No, don't do this. Don't bring that up. So then that happened, and Hi. then she legit tried. Oh, she should not have because it was not going to go well. And then he finally, you no, know, when when Ree went to him and you know, first of all, threatened his him and his wife with a gun. Are you fucking out of your mind? That's again not a good, not a good thing. You get his wife to change his mind and to get the mutants out of uh, trash industries, right? And do the right thing, only to have. His entire team and one of his, I'm assuming is one of his good friends, his good agent friends, slaughtered in front of him by a mutant. There's no coming back from this. Not just his friends, everybody else too. Yeah. Like, he's the lone survivor of a mutant massacre, <laughs> guys. He's gone. Let's throw on that term, okay? Hold on. I'm talking. I'm sorry. You're right, I'm sorry. So I'm just, you know, okay. I am. I'm a little ta- a little tasteful. I'm sorry. You know, just you know, <laughs> a flat line massacre, a flat scan massacre. Right? A, flat scan massacre. Like a flat scan massacre. A flat scan massacre. Okay. Live. <laughs> right. Uh, Jace ain't coming back from this, guys. I'm sorry, but I. No, I it's a wrap, dog. Yeah, it's a wrap. The I, I, of the show. There's no. There's no more going to have a conversation with Jace Turner. <laughs> there's no more. Maybe he'll see the right side, the good side of me. No, this is one no, guy. I can't give him that look again. Like, no, geez, she cannot. Because he's going to get one. No. His, mom, his wife was like, let her, let her finish. You wanted to gun at this woman? Right, right. Mm, now? I love Jace's wife. Can we Jace's talk about wife. Jace's wife? Oh, yeah. I love her so much. She, first of all, that that love of a strong black woman will pull you back from the brink every single time. Uh, not 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 <laughs> after this. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Down the limit. Love that love. Right, right. Look, I believe in the power and love of black women, but mm-hmm. ooh, this is gonna be testing the limits right here, guys. I don't look, think. Look, that, look, mm. look, look. Uh, super glue is only so strong. Yo, look, look. look. It, 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 super does not mean infinitely strong. Hell, at you this know, point, at this point, the love of that black woman is going to go kill them all, Jace. Kill no, them all. No. So, where, how many more guns do you need, Jace? <laughs> right. And he, and even if you have like the most objective, objective friend that tries to pull you off the ledge, Jace tells you all of this, and you just like. Yo, man, I know, I, I, I know it's crazy, but nah, nah, you can't do it. Why not? It's, like, it's that Kendra nah, song, like, yo, I just shot him. I just shot him. Nah, I, I, I mean, I would have shot him pilots. too, but you shouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm not saying. So look, so look. At that point, like, yo, you're right. 
but you cannot do that. You just can't. It's just like, it's just like, hey, look, man, you're going to do what you're going to do. And I'm saying I would do it, but I understand. Like, that's what I you, 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 you just got, you, all you can do with Jace at this point is go, I understand. Like, anything from this point on that Jace does, I'm not condoning it, but I understand. And that's the best part of an X Men villain. Where yes. you can see their side, which is yes. why I continue to say that this is, this, not, this 10 episodes is the best X Men's been done in the mainstream. Yes. Yes. Because th- you have to have a sympathetic villain. Yeah, to me, Jace is not even a villain. Oh, he will be. Wait for these last, wait for these last three. Oh, oh, oh. oh. he's a villain as shit. He will be. He just. Like, I'm sorry. Hey, so he's let's, not wrong, but you're about to some for real villain as shit. Like, let's just jump to the end. Like, what they do? Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. We can't jump to the end. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Because when he puts that bullet in Dreamer, Ooh, buddy, Ooh, buddy. <laughs> I don't like. Your happiness. Your no, I, I wasn't cheering for Dreamer to die, but you always see it on television shows where like we're gonna hurt one of these alleged leading characters, and you're like, okay, we'll do it. These kids are like, no, fuck you, and they shot her. Right. Like, I, 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 it just caught me off guard for this type of show. I'm not gonna All lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I was the stalker kids. I was like. Well, fucking shoot her in the you shoulder then. It. You ain't shooting no yeah. oh, shit they shot her. Oh yeah. <laughs> you ain't big and bad. <laughs> you talking all that shit. Do this shit. Man, I'm and- so glad y'all said that. I'm so <laughs> glad because the whole time it's like it's like when you in school, yo, I'm gonna punch you in your face. You won't. Say I won't. You will not. <laughs> you won't. You not gonna do it. That nigga ain't punching me. And then when he actually swings, you like, yo, I you can't believe this motherfucker <laughs> We didn't think you was gonna hit him. This nigga like, you saw him. I said, oh shit, you shot. What the fuck are you doing? Y'all shot him? Well, it was supposed to be a threat. But but I love how they backed up that moment with them displaying their powers, which is obviously a huge like display moment for the show. But they followed that with the emotional realization of if we'd have done in the first place, our friend would be alive. Yes. They didn't let the characters escape the consequences of their choices. I really appreciated that. And like that was well, and for all the bombastic shit, that's some depth writing. Yeah. Well, what I liked more was that they did it and they were like, We did it. We we did it. He got what he wanted and our friend is still dead. It wasn't so much that like if we would have done it sooner, but we gave in when we should we should have never gave in. You got you got, got gave him everything he wanted, but we got nothing out of it. That's we had nothing, we had nothing yeah. but a dead friend out of it. The other thing too is, so when they shot her, I'm still thinking like they shot her in the leg, they shot her in the stomach. She's gonna live. They pull back and that bullet is in her head, and I'm like, oh son of a bitch! Like they really yeah, but they've got <laughs> they've got people on staff who can fix that kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> like she may end up a sentinel a sentinel um person. Uh, do they? Uh, no, I think she's dead. Oh, I think she's dead. Oh, I, don't know. I know she's dead. I'm trying to give Shanna hope. Okay, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Oh, nice. It's the go. holidays. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. oh no. Dream, dream of Dana. Dana, she's gone. That's baby face. I, I, I'm not. I knew she was gone. I just think it's okay. sad. See, when I think of all of the wasted potential that I was going to have in my love triangle polyamorous relationship that was going to happen. A little bit too much about you, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> you, want, you, you want Blink to be Nola Darling? <laughs> all right. Um, I think we all know that Dreamer <laughs> would be Nola Darling in yeah, this situation. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, you know, the, the way they did that, like, Whew. And, and Dr. Campbell's got his face fucked up and everything like that too now from 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 episode eight and I it, it this episode just whew, just hit you with everything and then you get that it, it, just oh, god damn it like there's there's a lot of that going on when I watch this episode going oh this is just not gonna go well and then when they find out that Esma has been 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 leading everybody on then when when their truckers come back and they find no, out that she's around playing everybody yeah you're right playing mm-hmm. everybody and here's the thing it was so easy. For her to play everybody, I'm really excited for this for 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 episode eleven now, because now all three of them are going to be together. She pulled a classic Emma move, if you think about it, the way she was learn from the best, pantomiming the the whole <laughs> the whole uh, situation and and really maneuvering. Because at first, I'm just like, when I see her implanting the dreams, I'm like, at this point, why don't you just 
bogart their minds and and make them do it or tell somebody to take it but it there was a there was a skill in what she was doing where she, it made you feel like the decision you were making was based off of what you felt mm-hmm. and, I, I, I will say that that her going full scooby doo villain this episode <laughs> wasn't the strongest shit. like like i, I I feel what? I feel what you're oh, saying. Come on, man. For, come for on, me, it was like... Not it was no, and it was just me. <laughs> Why don't you do what you want to do? Why don't you do what you want to do? We're like, what the fuck? Like, come on, like... Yeah, I guess she nudged him, but like... that. If, if she if if they had played in one of those scenes the episode before, I'd have been happier. How about that? Well, I think it would have made, I think it would have made it better for episode nine itself. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, nine, nine, nine is really... One is dreams? Lorna, Lorna's dream. She set that off, right? Yeah, that was a couple episodes ago. Yeah. Oh, you're she right. Set off Lorna's dream. She, she did. Yeah, no, she implanted stuff in Reed and yeah. uh, Kate's. Yeah, she, yeah. She, yeah, she. She did have a long yeah. game. She did have a long That's, game. I'm I, sure. I spent all three episodes screaming at the television. Esme is the feds. Why doesn't anybody know that Esme is the feds? Like it was driving me absolutely bananas. Ew, my, my, I, I, I would say the, I would say some sort of like anti feds, like Esme the cartel, like right. <laughs> um, like so, I feel like the feds is is, is uh, Esme underselling was, Esme's desires. Here. So so my thing, I was just say she someone realized that she is shady. Why won't anyone realize? So so my thing is well, now you got all three of them together, like. That's it, right? What, like, what is the, what do you guys do to stop them now? Because like, uh, no, there's no stopping them. Because I'm like, no. this is the first move of the whatever um, the break left of their brother contingent. Yeah, because I'm like, yo, you, you that was one. One of them basically manipulated the entire underground. Now you get all fucking fun. because, and, th- and that's one of the things about that I love about the brother and X Men dynamic is even though they're trying to help mutants, you don't know who you can actually trust to be helped. Right, like maybe they're a mole, maybe they're a plant, and they've already done that with the Sentinel services stuff. But this is a whole new wrinkle because people who aren't controlled for so long. This show has shown us the X Men versus the humans, and I would contest that on the big screen they lean into that trope a bit too much as well. But when they try to go mutant versus mutant, it's always over something fucking ridiculous, like a cure or a, a attack. I don't know. I don't know what the first that movie was actually about, but <laughs> this is one where it feels like for the first time they've added the layer of subtlety where like, hey, we're both trying to get free because guess what? It was your plan to get free. You didn't know what else you were free. Well, it, it, they're, they're, you know what it is when you, the way the deal, and okay, we're, we're going to be talking about this tomorrow when we do this uh, Summers yeah, Brothers uh, character corner. The thing with when you do mutant versus mutant in an X-Men movie or any kind of thing is you, you don't fight over an object like a cure or something like that. You fight over basically... The tactics. What are the, the tactics? The ideas. The ideas and the tactics for getting free. Because that's what this is. Like, here's the thing: the 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 mutant underground wasn't going to do to go with a plan that involved. Uh, they, they're going to want a plan that tries to minimize the the casualties of humans. Cuckoos are like, no, nah, fuck that shit. Like, <laughs> we slaughter them all and we get our people free. And it took one of her. It was just, well, technically three. Just the three of them got rid of everything. Like, that's just how powerful they were. They took it all down. Like, bruh. Have you read any of the, like, I like I read an interview with the actress, um, and she was talking about how basically the three of them are going to be set up, like, id, ego, super ego. So you have, like, the rational one. You have the very impulsive one. And then you have the um, kind of like very above it all one. And so she was like, "How she has to play these scenes? It's just like uh, what's that show they used to come Orphan on? Orphan Black. Orphan Black. Yes, yeah, she has to play these scenes against herself. Where it's just all three of them in the scene. Does talking. she make triple pay rate? <laughs> she should. She cut her hair. No one's ever answered me that on those kind of shows. Like, do they make triple the rate? Right. I know Tatiana Maslany better had. Um, she was playing like eight characters. She was the main character on Orph- Orphan Black. Oh, I need to watch that. But I think I she think played that, like eight versions of herself. But I think that that's <laughs> the thing that's going to be interesting with it. Not like you said. I, I think this is where they, the, you know, the show shows they they get the concept. Is that you know now that the X Men just because the X Men are gone because the Brotherhood is gone doesn't mean those ideals are gone. 
and right. the real division between how they move forward. Do you sit here and you play defense? Because even before they got caught, remember, Esme was was embedded. She was like next to it. She was learning information. She was she was with the senator, right? And so she was apparently doing, and they got caught. The, the other two got caught. With, I guess they were undercover doing something. So it's like, you know, what was their plan, and how are they handling this? And right now, the the if you look at the underground, the underground is running defense. They're just moving between safe house to safe house. They're just trying to survive, and they're taking the refugees, and um, they're not actually fighting. And I believe. That once you get, because you guys saw one thing that did happen, and I guess it was eight when they brought in that spy, the the Chloe, the one that had been given the drugs and been experimented on. The some of the other mutants were like, "Yo, why is she even here? You should, you should get rid of her." So it stands to reason that you know the cuckoos are gonna 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 have some people that are like, "We should listen to them." They're fighting back. They just took out an entire team of easily took out an entire team of Sentinel service uh, agents. Why are we sitting here listening to these people that barely can get, can, can barely survive? Why are we doing this? Like, why are we what? hiding? Why are we doing like, it's, it's, it's going to set up the, the, the important philosophical debate that you, that is at the center of every mutant storyline. Only if one of those truckers go with them. Yes. But then it doesn't because you need both of them for them to be truly powerful. They can still do some shit. Like yeah. not, let's not sell Andy an old girl short, please. Right. That's the thing. It's like they're still powerful on their own. But I'm with you. It's like if you split off, if you split off the struckers. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. Remember, remember, you know, uh, as has already shown the ability to manipulate people with oh, their thoughts. Oh, and also, um, after that jailbreak, the 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 underground's nowhere nearby. There's one way out right now for you, Joe Broken Mutants, and it's with the cuckoos. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you uh, you may not get an option. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. we're leaving, right? It's, well, I mean, <laughs> well, when you when you think about it, remember everybody that was on that bus got saved by them. Exactly. So right then, then and there, everybody that was on that bus outside of maybe uh, uh, the Struckers. Everybody else on that bus is probably going to go with them. So yeah, and that's one of the the Brotherhood's recruiting tactics. We literally saved your life. Join us. Yeah, and uh, Jace is gonna be such a villain, um, and I can't blame him for this. Like, whew. Jace is a, yo. You know what they did? They set me up with Rory Campbell. That's Ahab. I got you. I'm watching you, Ahab. You got both legs. You're still good. However, they slipped Jason past me. I'm not gonna lie. They got me. Mm. Like he, um, like dude, and the way that that scene went down, like everything. They were shooting each other. The dude that got the dude that pulled the pin out and got into the car. Nigga, look, no, no. See, <laughs> bruh. That's why telepaths are terrifying, <laughs> bruh, bruh. Like all the new Good. powers are fun to joke about. Telepathy, fuck you. But the worst, you know, what the worst thing about that one was, yo, she didn't, and inf- she didn't, she didn't do anything to the dude that was in the car with him. No. So the dude sat man? there and watched as his old boy got in the window and then realized it was a grenade and just like. Come on, son. Like, it's just, oh, my God. That Please was a part. massacre. They, she didn't have to do all of that. She didn't have to. She didn't well, do all of that. Well, here's the she thing. She wanted to do all well, of that. Well, again. And you here, tell her no. You tell her no. Well, well one is. A cookie? You, 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 nope. Right, right. You got that. Well, that's one. But, when she got her scissors with her? No, we good. Well, then that's the other thing, too. It's like, on the on the surface, you're like, okay, this was bad, blah, 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 blah. But what's going to happen is they're going to be like, well, you do know what they were doing in that facility, right? You do realize exactly. that, they, one, they, like, Campbell killed Killed Dreamer. He did that shit. Uh, two, they were experimenting on human. I mean, on, on mutants and killing us when they need to. They were literally using us as, as, as test dummies. Like, they deserve to die. And they're not wrong, you know? It's like, nope. you, you're going to go, oh, well, what's going to happen is Jason going to go have a funeral and they're going to go, oh, these men had families and blah, 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 blah. But <laughs> so these, so do these mutants. So you you like yeah dude you guys are still wrong like you guys you guys are the slave catchers like you guys deserve to like you you got to kind of deserve to die here like you you did deserve that shit so um yeah man that scene Can't was they just all just get along no <laughs> no we we no. not even, no. <laughs> pretty clearly not actually. no uh yeah so that was an amazing reveal and again it makes me see it makes me wonder like how much more we're gonna how much more they're gonna reveal and. Like I said, my, my whole my whole hope for this is that we do get a second season for this. I think the show deserves it. I know the ratings 
aren't that great, at least on the same day. But I'm 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 really hoping. I'm really hoping I have not once again given my hope to Fox and they they fucking squander it. Like I I can't believe that I can't believe people don't watch this show but fucking watch Gotham still. Like I am so fucking pissed at that shit. Are Gotham's ratings good? I don't know. Uh, let me check. <laughs> they keep going. I mean, it's like what five seasons in now. It's like it's ridiculous. I know. People I, honestly th- I honestly think Gotham is is on the Fox list of like we've got Batman on television. No one else does. I I, I refuse to accept it's getting great ratings. It's just weird to me. Yeah, it's weird to me that people don't seem to like this or like, oh, this this show is boring. And I'm like, it's the best depiction of X-Men and Mutants that I've ever seen. Right. Uh, probably outside of Legion, which I just watched. So I hadn't watched Legion at the time that I started watching. Legion. Actually, I think uh, I think Legion, um, I think, um, which I'm sorry, I, to cut you off, but I, I think uh, The Gifted is around the same that, uh, ratings as Gotham. So they're around the same. Let's roll them. We good? So yeah, you better, you better yeah. fucking keep The Gifted. Yeah, I, you know what, what, they're, it, what they're building right now and where they're going, like even just seeing what they built so far and I think where they're going in these last three episodes with the Stafford Cuckoos, I feel like they have to have a season two planned out. And if Fox doesn't give it to them, I, I don't understand. Like, then what are we here for? Um, well, well, another thing is the whole, the, the merger throws some uncertainty into that since Disney would, control the tv aspect do they would they see it and say well we don't need to we don't have a vested interest in this anymore we can let it rock we can they, let it roll i think they got a, they, they should got enough time for a season two though because that's right. the merge is not going to be finalized until at least at the earliest december or next year so i right. would think that this would and, get, and it, yeah. it is getting finalized too like there's there's no if i was trump's friend I, we're getting this finalized if i if that's my man it's getting finalized so but they can't move on anything until Right. They get everything. I eyes are dotted, T's are crossed. But I'm just saying that those a little bit of uncertainty into it. But right. if it's getting the same ratings Gotham is, I think it's safe to say they're going to keep it rolling. Yeah, they should. They they should. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's it's like I, I really feel like I don't know what people are. Exp- I don't, you know, no, I do understand. I don't think a lot of people understand the X Men. I think that's what it is. I think I think and I think it's due to. What Fox has done to dilute them in the in live action in the movies, so I don't think people will get them. Like to me, this show is giving me what I want from the X Men on TV. Like, you know, you're not gonna get. Yeah, sure, we can get the powers, we can get that stuff, and that, and we're getting that. But to me, the 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 story of the X Men has always been about this, the drama that comes with it. You know, um, the powers are cool, but it's the the more than any I would say more than any other comic book. You know, the X Men are always about this kind of stuff. The power dynamics, the the, the you know, people are talking about Brighton, its whole thing with the racism, how they were they they were so bad at tackling it. I'm like, well, then watch the Gifted because the Gifted is literally tackling those same things, and they're not really being that subtle about it. You know, right? So, I, right. yeah, I, just, I was so invested from moment one with this show, mm-hmm. and I I just don't understand how. I mean, I get how other people weren't as invested, but I just don't understand how people are like, it's not as, like, especially, I saw people who really liked Inhumans and were like, I just can't get into gifted. No, no, can't do that. I can't, there's no, no, sorry. I, I, those, I, are Russian, those are Russian bots. Yeah, Russian bots. I, just, I can't. <laughs> can't That's police. So, well, the other thing too that, is, that, yeah, the other thing too is like, I will say this, like when the show like The Gift is, it kind of reminds me of Agent of Shield where there's so much potential there. And like we've seen what Agent of Shield has done with you know getting renewed season after season and getting five seasons, they like they got more budget, they got re- able to do more stuff. Like to me, where the gift is for a first season is way better than I think any other show we've seen uh, be at, at, at first. Like maybe outside of like you know yeah the the Flash is a different type type of animal. <laughs> the Flash well, this is, is a spinoff. Right. One, it was a spinoff, and two, it's just like, you know, yeah, it, yeah. So they're also using a, a huge A-list character for them. Um, but it's still different. Like, that's that's an outlier, and I don't think a lot of people understand that The Flash, if you will, his first season was an outlier. And even The the Flash itself, the series, has had a, has had to do a lot to try to live up to that first season, you know? they And I don't think they have. 
I, the Flash is using a big seven Justice League member. The X Men are, ta- are marching up Polaris, the ninth X Men. Exactly. So, it, like, it's, no, this, this, yeah, Flash doesn't. Right. Flash, Flash, Flash is an ally, but when you compare it to everything else, like, The Gift is having one hell of a first season. And it, it, it makes me think of when you get a hell of a first season and if you, what, what they can do going forward. You know, okay, I've, I've seen what Gotham tried to do and they did not do well. You know, and and I've seen what other shows have tried to do. Like this show is pretty much it's gotten stronger. Um, and while the I'm I'm glad they didn't extend the season. I'm glad they gave it just they're just doing thirteen. Um, I would I would love to see another thirteen and another season of what they have going forward because I think it'll build on what they've already done here. And um, yeah, this is I mean like I said, hey, look, people like weird different things all the time, and I get that. But to me, like. I love the X Men, and this is just this is the closest we've gotten to something that actually understands what the X Men are, and it's not even close. Like it's not, and um, yeah, I like the you know I I think even if we think that the the acting isn't that strong, I think they're doing pretty well. I remember what Chloe Bennett started off on Agent of Shield. People hated her character. People hated Sky. Now, can you imagine that they were doing Asian Shield and they told you that Chloe Bennett wasn't coming back as Daisy? People would fucking riot. So, you know, I remember um, uh, we had uh, 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 Brett, you know, Brett Dalton, you know. People didn't like his character either. Now it's like, yo, so we're not going to get Ward again on the show? Like, can we get like a, I don't know, Ward LMD? Like, people want him back on the show. Like, so it's like, I, I would just say to people, it's like, yo, if you have a good foundation, which I think this show does, I want more of this. Definitely do. So I'm hoping to stick around. So, and I'm really excited about the next few episodes. Um, real quick, we'll go around. Um, what are your guys' predictions? Do you guys have any predictions for the next three episodes, for the final three episodes? I don't really, because I don't know too much about the Stepford Cuckoos other than what I wikied. Uh, so I think for me, I want Blink and Johnny to get together <laughs> in some capacity. Um, and I want I want to see the Strucker twins. I want to see the Destructo twins destroy something. <laughs> like, I just... I. I just want to see them. I don't care if it's trash. I don't care what it is. I want to see them like pull an entire building down. Oh, which reminds me, shout out to them for the uh, adamantium uh, reference. Mm-hmm. The room they were in was uh, made out of adamantium. So, Jeff, did you, you did you get the feeling real quick when um, when he started explaining it? I I almost mouthed it word for word what what he was gonna say, but he's like, "Yeah, we found it, Canada." Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. right. Yep, yep. I was like, "Oh, so you got so you got, so 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 you guys have made the uh, Weapon X program canon?" Okay, all right. you know, I see what you're doing. Like, again, it's little it's the little things that the show does with uh, things like that. It's like, oh, they fucking get it. Like, they knew to put it in there, but kind of do it as a throwaway line. So that you don't have to actually go, yeah, there's a guy named Logan, and we put him. They didn't go heavy handed. They just did it really subtle. And I'm like, it's nice, guys. That was nice. Well done. Well done. I appreciate. I appreciate their. Um, uh, I appreciate them not going heavy handed with that because they could have. Like anything else, it's like Wolverine. Sometimes it's like Marvel's Batman. Sometimes you just put them in everything. So I'm kind of glad they didn't go heavy handed with that, but they still kind of mentioned it. I'm like, not bad. Not bad, guys. Not bad. Right. Uh, Deepom, you got anything? Uh, no, I just want to see how much further they go into the universe. I, um, I think the Strucker stuff's interesting, but and and I think this is kind of a weakness of the show. Not a weakness of the show, maybe a strength of the show is that they've made the rest of the universe so damn compelling that while they've made the Struckers much more compelling in the last five episodes, I'm still more like, yeah, yeah, I'll ride with them only so I can see more of this world. Mm-hmm. And I think they're doing a very good job as far as. Um, like Shannon said, it's making me want to see the powers more than anything. I want to see them not tear a building down. I want to see them continue because I think Chris is right. Is that a lot of people have fallen into like the the powers of the X Men, and we're going to talk at length soon about Havoc and Cyclops. And I'll mention well, I'll mention Havoc's powers a lot because people don't give the man the credit. But it's interesting to see how they're the beauty of the comics is that they're more than their powers of the people. 
And while I feel like I'm echoing some of those fake commercials at the end of the gifted, mm-hmm. it's it, it, it it's been really nice to see that the depictions of mutants haven't been this is Eclipse and he can shoot flare, but it's been like the Marcos and he has a couple past with a girlfriend who he did a bunch of fucking terrible shit with, but he's trying to become a better person. And this is Polaris, the mission of magic. No, it's a girl who's scared with her child and her, her as Shanna says, pretty much common law boyfriend. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not James, the, the meathead. It's, it's not Thunderbird, the meathead, the muscle. It's James Proudstar, conflicted, remaining left behind X-Men to trying to lead a resistance. It's the people behind the powers that have always been the selling point. And I think that this is the first time I can say confidently, because even the cartoon, let's be real, it was designed for children because we watched it with our children. And so the powers were why we were there generally. Yeah. This is the first time I felt like the X-Men have been treated with adult gloves and I'm really happy to see it. And so yeah. more than anything, like if they want to throw Fred J. Dukes in here or Dominic Petros, um, that's fine, but if they want to keep it with this cast and keep if the if the cuckoos are the closest I get to the X Men, I'm okay with that. Get in the former New Hellfire Club, which, by the way, if the cuckoos are here, that's weapon fucking X. Like, I'm sorry, like yes, the adamantium matters, but if they're cloning little girls from Emma's genetic material, that's weapon X. <laughs> like, you open yeah. the door, gifted. I expect us to walk through that same door. And whether you say, you know, the, the, whether you go with the Weapon Plus program and make them numbers instead of letters, I don't really give a shit. However, <laughs> Adamantium plus the Cuckoos, damn it, Jeff, you made me do this rant. Now I need Weapon X. I need an acknowledgement that the, and it, it's happened already, that the government has started to weaponize mutants, but I need acknowledgement that it's been done in the past. Really? And that's where I think it'll get really compelling because if you want to tell the other half of the story, you say, oh, the Cuckoos are only here because of experimentation. He said, what do you need? Oh, well, your father was working on the more benevolent side, trying to suppress powers, which, you know, benevolence is a scale. These people were actively trying to weaponize them and develop and, and specialize mutations. Well, I'm actually so, glad you brought that up because I think that's the thing that we didn't really mention with Dr. Campbell that I think he kind of dropped hints of that mm-hmm. he, where, where Reed Father Otto was trying to suppress the mutant gene, trust industry seems like they're just trying to weaponize it. To oh, no, he says that. He yeah. says... He says, your father was trying to stop it. I am trying to enhance it. Right. Um, right. And we should also mention oh, that they've already... talk about how his face got fucked up by Otto. Oh, yeah, no, no. He, his face is definitely messed up. And I, I love the fact um, that he... I love the fact that he actually had, now has the uh, facial scars of a true villain. <laughs> like, he's now a true look, villain. when he loses the leg, everyone run and fucking hide, please. That's right. all I'm saying. Like, people don't read X-Men comics, and they didn't read the 87 stuff. That's fine. When he loses a leg... I need all the listeners to prepare for some bad shit. Right. Um, I was going to say, also, um, oh, damn it. There's one thing, because I was going to mention the, 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 he's gripping, oh, even the little Sentinel machines they have have gotten stronger and upgraded since mm-hmm. then. So it was like, I, like, if we, I swear to God, if we get real Sentinels on this goddamn TV show and they couldn't give us real we Sentinels. Won't. I'm only going to do that for right now. We're not going to get that. I'm just saying, you're saying we that now. It, we make it, we make it man size. We make it like mini Sentinels, like human sized robots. We're not getting 20 foot tall. Oh, no, 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 no. I, look, look, I'll take, I'll take the man sized ones. Okay, fair enough. Okay, good. Take the man-sized one. I'll take the man-sized ones. I, I definitely will. I'm Have a... you guys gone to the Sentinel Services website? No. No, I don't like so, to be tracked. <laughs> I, <laughs> I did that the other day. Um, I was just, like, Googling random stuff, and I realized they had, like, a full website for it. So you go to the Sentinel Services website, and it's pretty cool. It's just, like, all these, like, the mutant gene. What is it? How do you protect your family? And then there's all these like testimonials from people who are like, until I went in to get tested, I didn't know like <laughs> that I had the gene, and now I feel so much better and da 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 and all this other stuff. And we're gonna find out they're making um, Sentinel primes. <laughs> but then when you click, um, it says order an at home X gene test for yourself. I was totally gonna get one, so I clicked it. And you click it, and it's like a video of Blink, and she's like, "It's all lies. They're lying to you." Like, it's, yeah, it like warns you away. It's pretty cute. I liked it. Oh, that's funny. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see where they go for the show. The rest of the, the, I feel like they're gonna finish strong, and like I said, I really hope it does come back for a second season because I think it deserves it. So, 
Um, it, it, um, the just uh, real quick, the uh, Monday at nine o'clock is a very hard, uh, a tough slot, mm-hmm. particularly against internet, Monday Night Football. Yeah, no, they, right. you're it's right. Yeah. The fall NBA, um, everything, and, and Monday is stacked. So for them to pull the numbers that they are, I think it's they're going to be graded on a curve. Yeah, no, I actually want, you should also probably see what the DVR numbers are too, because that's what right. That, that's what I think. That's what's also really helped with uh, Asian Shield um, is DVR numbers, and they know that. Look, I'll put it this way, man. Like people sit there and say that Asian Shield numbers are low. I also know that when it comes to again, I don't really promote our, our stuff on our reviews like that on YouTube. And we're just doing voice. We don't actually do like video YouTubes. They're the ones that do the best. Like we consistently get more people listening to those, and they listen to the like they don't just listen to like one episode, uh, like a piece of it. People go and listen to the entire thing. So it's like, I think more people watch Asian and Shield than they give credit for. So oh, I think the same thing probably happened with The Gifted. So, all right, yeah. folks, that's, that's where it is. We'll be back hopefully in close shit. The show comes back next next Monday. Uh, so we'll be back in uh, sometime in end of January to, to wrap up this show and talk about it. And hopefully we'll find out by then if we get another, another, another season. So, um, you can stay tuned for that. We also got Super Tuesday recap one. Uh, we still have, I haven't put out the Punisher review. That was done as well. So we have that coming out. We have this. Uh, tomorrow's a mail. Damn it. <laughs> we, have a, <laughs> we have a mailbag coming out. Uh, I don't know if this will come out. before. This probably won't come out before the mailbag. Uh, but you guys, if you guys have questions for the mailbag for January, just email us mailbag at mtrnetwork.net. And actually, Deep Home, I owe you an email for our agenda for tomorrow. You and, do. And I will do that before we run it, when I get off of here. So, again, folks, thank you guys very much for listening. And uh, make sure you subscribe, Super Tuesday Recap on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or follow us on YouTube, youtube.com slash MTR Network. Until next time, we are out of here. Peace. Peace.